So, dear colleagues, uh, good afternoon. It's my pleasure to introduce you today Professor Dario Roccatello, who is full professor of nephrology um, in Torino, Italy, and is head of the Department of Nephrology and Dialysis and the head of the Center of Research of Immunopathology and Rare Diseases and is the author or co-author of more than 400 scientific publications in the field of patients with autoimmune conditions with a special focus on glomerulopathies. And last year, he published in uh, Nature Reviews Disease um, Primers, a review on cryoglobulinemia. And today, he will, he will discuss the diagnosis and treatment of cryoglobulinemic vasculitis. So do not hesitate to send your questions through the website during the talk so that we can begin the discussion just after the talk. Professor Roccatello, thank you, and go on. Thank you so much for your kind presentation. So, um, can I? Okay. The classification of uh, cryoglobulinemia is based on the type of uh, the cryoprecipitable immunoglobulin. There are three main uh, subgroups. Type 1 is associated with uh, B cell prolifer proliferative diseases, and patient serum contains a monoclonal immunoglobulin, most often IgM. Type 2 Type 2 mixed cryoglobulinemia comprises serum immune complexes formed of monoclonal IgM that are K restricted and the polyclonal IgG. Type 3 mixed cryoglobulinemia comprises serum complex, complexes formed by both uh, by, by uh, IgM and uh, IgG, both poly polyclonal. Um, this, uh, uh, this talk is especially devoted to <coughs> mixed cryoglobulinemia that uh, are type 2 and type 3, which are associated uh, uh, with uh, uh, a particular kind of kidney involvement. So, we specifically, sorry, we specifically fo uh, will focus on uh, cryoglobulinemic uh, glomerular nephritis. <clears throat> Detection of, a, of a circulating cryoglobulin is relatively common in patients with chronic uh, hepatitis C. And these cryoglobulins are usually asymptomatic. These patients should not be confounded with those showing clinical features of cryoglobulinemic vasculitis. The association between the cryoglobulinemia and the HCD infection is very strong. In some reports, more than 90% of cases. A cryoglobulinemic syndrome develops in less than 5% of cases. So we have not to confound the presence of circulating cryoglobulins in a, a, an asymptomatic patient with chronic uh, uh, um, infection, chronic hepatic infection. Nephritis can develop only in 0.5% of uh, HCV infected persons. A genetic background probably is important to uh, drive this uh, these uh, uh, conditions and the extrarenal signs usually precede the kidney, the, the kidney manifestation, but in a minority of cases, kidney manifestations appear first. Biopsy, renal biopsy, is mandatory in any case of a suspected kidney involvement. This is a typical. Uh, membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis uh, in uh, uh, the course of uh, cryoglobulinemia uh, with uh, endocapillary proliferation and the deposits uh, in the capillary lumina. 
and uh, uh, the double contours are uh, uh, particularly obvious in uh, this slide. While this other slide shows uh, the presence of uh, hood deposits of uh, cryoglobulins that can be that are mag magnified in the, this uh, uh, this slide. And uh, <clears throat> cryoglobulins can uh, um, can even obstruct the uh, lumina in the form of uh, pseudotrombi that are better shown here, while the immunofluorescence pattern is characterized by granular IgM and IgG plus C3 uh, deposits in the subendothelial space and mesangium, and also, of course, in the uh, pseudotrombi. This is a, a, a slide showing the particular uh, aspect of uh, cryoglobulins in uh, um, the deposition, in subendothelial deposition and the intramembranous deposition. The cryoglobulins are, cryoglobulins are also phagocytosed by uh, uh, monocytes uh, that uh, are very characteristically present in these biopsies uh, uh, between uh, the, uh, in the endothelial line and the lining and the, the um, uh, glomerular based membrane in uh, uh, producing a, a characteristic interposition. And these are uh, the, the aspect, the electron microscopy aspect of uh, um, uh, cryoglobulins. Uh, that uh, cannot be confounded with other uh, organized deposits. They are, they are microtubular or annular or ring structure of uh, uh, a particular uh, size. What about pathogenesis? These cells <clears throat> are targeted are targets of uh, hepatitis C virus uh, due to the cell surface expression of uh, CD81 uh, receptor, which is shared with hepatocytes. An HCV dependent uh, gene translocation able to protect cells against apoptosis sustains the olecronal monotypic lampoproliferation that occurs in mixed cryoglobulin. Clonally restricted B cells produce IgM with K restriction that uh, has a rheumatoid activity toward the polyclonal IgG directed to the virus. These huge immune complexes uh, do not bind the erythrocyte transport system and uh, remain free to circulate and. Uh, uh, in the circle in the bloodstream and saturate, saturate the capacity of phagocytes to remove them. And uh, uh, with uh, the uh, <clears throat> the particular affinity uh, between uh, uh, these uh, cryoglobulins and uh, uh, mesangium uh, uh, due to the presence of IgM, uh, this uh, immune complexes can easily deposit a mesangium, whereas the cytokine production favor um, a number of events, of inflammatory events, including leukocyte diapedesis and uh, endothelial injury. Um, the relationship between uh, HCV infection and mixed cryoglobulinemic nephritis was addressed in a multi-center study of the Italian group of uh, renal immune pathology on about 50% of patients recruited by the Italian registry of renal biopsy between five year, in five years. Uh, this uh, 146 <clears throat> patients with nephritis have been prospectively for, forwarded up for another five years. And uh, the majority of these patients were uh, type 2, uh, have type 2 cryoglobulinemia. 
uh, while uh, about 90% of them had the circulating anti HCD antibodies, and 83% were also uh, uh, RNA positive. A diffuse membrane proliferative glomerulonephritis was the histologic, the, 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 the main histological presentation, followed by focal mesangial uh, membrane proliferative glomerulonephritis and mesangial glomerulonephritis. While uh, uh, the isolated uh, uh, urinary abnormalities were, was the most frequent presentation, followed by um, nephrotic syndrome and uh, uh, acute nephritis uh, syndrome. The most frequent uh, extrarenal symptoms uh, are uh, of corpora uh, with uh, weakness, atralgia, and uh, um, peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral neuropathy is better detected by uh, electromyography, which is really recommended in any cases of any case of cryoglobulinemic patient, even if asymptomatic. What about serological biomarker? Please uh, uh, remember that uh, remember that uh, we can we we hardly can uh, uh, made uh, can make a, a diagnosis of cryoglobulinemia without uh, mixed cryoglobulins in uh, detected in serum. This is apparently obvious, but is not so obvious in, uh, by examining the general literature. A uh, patient with uh, cryoglobulinemia is uh, 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 positive to the detection of um, rheumatoid factor, and is obvious for the reactive uh, the, the reaction of uh, IgM monoclonal IgM toward polyclonal IgG and. Uh, all, always, uh, uh, this patient has uh, low levels of C4. This is uh, uh, very, very frequent. frequent. Uh, involvement of uh, heart and uh, uh, kidney, or, uh, and also central nervous uh, uh, system, which is very uh, rarely found in uh, the course of this disease as an organ involved. Uh, are uh, associated with a worse prognosis. Leukocytic vasculitis has a, a, an histologic, histopathological hallmark of a mixed cryoglobulinemia. The arteriolar uh, wall in uh, the bottom side of the picture is almost unrecognizable due to lycocyte infiltration and destruction of uh, the blood vessel wall. What about therapy? Current therapy is based just on uh, these uh, uh, direct uh, antiviral uh, combinations, agent, agent combination, with a short therapy duration, minimal side effects, and the antiviral efficacy approaching 100%. There were hopes that uh, direct uh, antiviral agents represented the end of the road in the treatment of, of mixed cryoglobulinemia and uh, uh, cryoglobulinemic vasculitis because several studies seem to show positive effects of uh, uh, DAHA in patients with membrane proliferative glomerulonephritis or other HCV related renal manifestation. And the American Association for the Study of Liver Disease and the European Association both recommended prioritizing direct antiviral agent treatment in patients with symptomatic mixed cryoglobulinemia associated with. HCV infection. But looking at the journals, uh, do you see any nephrologic journal? And why that? Simply because these studies would have been rejected, definitely, 
Let's give a look to some of them in detail. In Gragnani paper, in Gragnani paper, renal involvement was present in 9% of cases, one at the renal biopsy, one at the nephrotic syndrome without biopsy, and two of them reduced GFR. In uh, this other uh, paper published on uh, hepatology, uh, seven out of uh, 12 uh, patients has a reduction in proteinuria and uh, <clears throat> um, EGFR in improvement. But only two patients has a clear improvement in serum creatinine. One was given rituximab and one was only as a, a had only a clinical diagnosis without renal biopsy. Changes were negligible in four patients, and the creatinine increased over time in the remaining patient. What about proteinuria? The only patient who had an nephrotic range proteinuria received also rituximab. Another patient with proteinuria uh, from uh, 1.5 to 80, um, um, 800. Uh, sorry, 0.8 gram, uh, was concomitantly given to stekinumab, which is a biological drug used in psoriasis and uh, whose uh, effects in, uh, um, in, uh, in, re in uh, renal inflammation is uh, unpredictable. Proteinuria decreased from 2 to 0.4 milligram gram creatinine in one patient who did not undergo renal biopsy. For the remaining four patients, proteinuria was negative in one, not determined in one, and only determined by urinalysis in two. And uh, what about uh, <clears throat> the most, uh, uh, most important paper may be published in these years about this uh, uh, this field, uh, 148 patients with uh, uh, HCV, cryo, perhaps vasculitis patients um, of a multi-center study where cryoglobulinemia was detected in uh, the majority of the patients, not in all the patients, in the majority of the patients. And uh, uh, one third of the patients were previously treated uh, with other drugs. Low C4, which we usually observe in every patient with cryoglobulinemia, mixed cryoglobulinemia, was present only in one third of this cohort of patients, and renal involvement was present in 25 out of 148 patients. And there is no trace, no evidence in this paper of a single renal biopsy. Let's show, let's present this case. A five, uh, uh, 55 year old man uh, who had the proteinuria and nephrotic range proteinuria, initial uh, um, uh, renal failure, microscopic hematuria, and C4, low C4, of course. And um, a, a viral load, uh, not so important, but anyway, um, cryocrit uh, low, but, uh, pre but cryoglobulin is present, uh, of polyclonal, uh, in, uh, and of course, uh, uh, rin, uh, rheumatoid factor. He had a renal biopsy uh, showing a mesangial proliferation and endocapillary hypercellularity with segmental distribution and uh, a typical uh, immunofluorescence pattern was given. Uh, a, a sophospupir um, based regimen. After the end of therapy, HCV RNA was obviously negative, but creatinine was the same, protein was the same, microscopic was the same. After, 80, after uh, uh, 18 months, HCV remained negative, but uh, uh, creatinine was the, the same, protein was the same, even uh, worse and microscopic hematuria, and uh, we performed another biopsy. And uh, what we found was that uh, um, there was a lot of sclerosis, 11 out of 18 sclerotic glomeruli. 
we lost our time and the patient was did not benefit in any case of uh, the, the direct uh, antiviral agents uh, as regard uh, his nephritis. So, viral eradication does not imply that the immunological process has been stopped. Several patients continue to have a bilamphocyte pleural expansion after the sustained viral uh, response. Persistence of B cell clone after the cure of the infection also promotes disease relapse. And uh, um, so we can conclude that uh, direct antiviral agent therapy in HCV mixed chloroglobulinemia induce a high virological response, but a limited or, or uh, uh, no, no response at all as about as regard the immunological, hematological, and clinical uh, response. What about standard immunosuppressor? <clears throat> this is the a, a standard schedule with a bolus of methylprednisolone followed by prednisone with tapering um, as a, um, in, a, in a, some months, cyclophosphamide and the now more frequent uh, mycophenolate and uh, uh, in escalation uh, uh, schedule plasma exchange, uh, better double filtration uh, technique that uh, is much better uh, uh, tolerated by, by the patient. Of course, when you give this uh, protocol, you have, you have to, uh, to add uh, a, a schedule of, uh, um, uh, of antiviral therapy because of the possibility of uh, uh, um, in, of, uh, uh, the, the induction of uh, a severe infection by HCV. And what about the B cell depletion therapy? Um, the anti uh, CD20 monoclonal antibody, rituximab, acts as the very first step of the pathogenetic cascade of uh, uh, globulin vasculitis, blocking B cell proliferation and the DGM production, which is critical for both cryoglobulin production and deposition in the glomeruli. In this Italian multicenter controls trial that compared the patient treated with the so-called best convention, conventional therapy consisting of steroids, cyclophosphamide or acetylopring and or plasma exchange uh, to um, uh, patient with uh, uh, rituximab, treated with rituximab in the other arm. Uh, this trial showed an impressive better outcome using rituximab. And uh, uh, these results were confirmed in a smaller control study performed in the USA with impressive differences in activity score and duration of remission between rituximab and conventional immunosuppressive drugs. All these studies suffer of the lack of long-term data. This is our experience on 31 patients intolerant or resistant uh, to the standard therapy with a severe um, Bomaro infiltration in five cases. Um, 16 had uh, severe renal involvement and uh, 29 uh, peripheral neuropathy and nine large skin ulcers. Rituximab was given uh, with our so-called improved protocol that consists of four plus two infusion of uh, uh, 375 milligram square meter uh, of, uh, um, of retractory tuximab given uh, weekly for uh, four plus two uh, in, uh, for four times followed by the two more infusion at uh, after one and two months. Follow up um, was uh, very long in uh, half of the patient, more than uh, 
uh, five years. And uh, this is the results uh, as regard to the, um, uh, the level of uh, the drugs of our uh, schedule. Uh, with uh, um, with a stable concentration of rituximab for long and a prolonged, very prolonged uh, B cell depletion till two years, two years after the administration of rituximab. Serum creatinine and especially proteinuria significantly improved and viral load doesn't increase. 20, 29 patients in this cohort had a severe polyneuropathy. Previous treatment included the corticosteroids, immunosuppressant, plasma exchange, antiviral, etc. Uh, prestige were present in 26, seven had burning heat. Muscle asthenia was present in 19. These figure were four, two, and three, respectively, after the treatment. And significant improvement was also found at the electromyography examination by detecting sensory nerve conduction velocity and amplitude and compound muscle action potential. And uh, the effects of skin ulcers were impressive as well. This is the historical outcome of patients with cryoglobulin with uh, the survival that are uh, dramatically reduced after years of uh, disease. In the rituximab era, after six years of follow-up, the survival rate was 75% and the probability of remaining symptom-free for 10 years without any other therapy after rituximab was approximately 60% after a single 4 plus 2 infusion cycle, while the, like, the likelihood of living symptom-free for five years after relapse was again 80%. Reinduction uh, with rituximab were carried out in nine relapsing patients, resulting again effective. Hepatic failure and sepsis are no more causes of death. Coming back to our patient with scleroglobulinemic vasculitis given direct antiviral agents, he was treated after 18 months with uh, uh, rituximab with these clinical effects. So what about the uh, international therapeutic guidelines? Please uh, throw away the recommendation of both the American and the European Association for the Study of Liver Disease. They do not base on robust evidence and consider cautiously also the KDGO guidelines, which do not apply to real life. Let me suggest to follow the update, the up-to-date indication just published. So, by concluding, direct anti-aging anti antiviral agents can be given in the same time, before or after rituximab. At the same time, there are some advantages, the lowering autoimmune response while lowering viral load and uh, we, without significant differences virologic responses. There are some potential hematologic uh, toxicity. Uh, sequential schedule mm, da given before rituximab with mild moderate arthralgia and purpura that can benefit on antiviral therapy even alone. But in the presence of uh, renal involvement, a biopsy proven renal involvement, because Please remember that a patient with cryoglobulinemia who has a non-nephrotic proteinuria and is not biopsied, biopsied is a patient with proteinuria, is a patient with cryoglobulinemia and proteinuria or reduced GFR is not 
necessarily a patient with cryogenic nephritis. Sequential, uh, in the, the sequential schedule, rituximab is given before, and this is mandatory in uh, membrane in diffuse membrane proliferative glomerulonephritis, and um, rituximab uh, take uh, into account also that this rituximab could further increase the odds of achieving sustained viral response by depleting B cells, which are a potential reservoir for the virus. Thank you for your attention. This is uh, the team I am proud to participate. And uh, let, me, um, let me remind you the next web seminar by Enrico Vital, non-infectious complications of peritoneal dialysis in, in children in October 29. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dario. Um, do you have the polls right now? Yes, we can start the polls if you are ready, Dario. So I will start the first question for the audience. Maybe you can read out the question, Dario, and the possible answers. Okay, so maybe if Dario doesn't read the question, I will read it. So HCV is the cause of cryoglobulinemic glomerulonephritis in about 10, 30, 60, or 90 percent of patients. Okay, let's wait some and more seconds. And then only 59 percent of participants have participated. So don't be shy, go ahead, push up the button. Go, 61, 63, almost there, 73. 80%, should we close the poll? Yes, maybe. Okay, so here are the results. Uh, can I comment? Yeah, yes. go ahead. Okay, I, maybe I was uh, not uh, clear enough in uh, uh, emphasizing the role of uh, hepatitis C virus uh, in the pathogenesis of cryogobernia because uh, many reports, uh, the, um, the association is uh, more than 90% of cases. And in our uh, um, uh, multicenter uh, experience in Italy, uh, that uh, included uh, okay. about half, uh, a half of the patient uh, uh, with this disease uh, uh, diagnosed in the previous five years, 88% of patients has uh, an HCV uh, infection. Okay. The next question. So, Dario, do you want to read it? Okay, I will go then. Uh, most frequent clinical presentation are urinary abnormalities, nephrotic syndrome, AKI, or acute nephrotic syndrome. You still have 30 seconds to vote. <clears throat> and in the meantime, if you want to send your questions for the discussion, please go ahead.
Okay, I'm going to close the question. Here are the results. Uh, so, um, can, I, can, I, can I comment? Yes, go on. Um, yes. Uh, uh, indeed, uh, urinary abnormalities uh, are the most frequent uh, kind of present clinical presentation. Uh, not so uh, greater uh, frequency as compared to nephrotic syndrome. So, and uh, also acute nephritic syndrome are, uh, is, is an important kind of clinical presentation. It's about one third uh, each, but uh, urinary abnormalities definitely more than the other. Okay. Okay, so let's go for the next question. Mm -hmm. So which are the typical biomarkers? I will leave you without reading anti-CCP, anti-nuclear antibodies, anti-RO0-SSA, low C4, low C3, and normal C4. More 15 seconds to vote. Okay, I'm closing and showing the results. Can you comment on it, Dario? Okay, uh, very, very glad for this result that, uh, of course, uh, is that uh, our message uh, uh, reached the target. Please uh, consider very with, uh, with much suspicion any case of uh, so-called vascular globulin vasculitis without uh, low C4 and without elevation of rheumatoid factor. Okay, let's go on to the last question from Dario. So what is the recommended therapy of uh, glomerulonephritis due to cryoglobulinemia? DAA, conventional immunosuppressive therapy, rituximab, or only steroids? Okay, 15 seconds left. Eighty-one percent have voted. So uh eighty-six actually showing the results. Um so Dario, do you want to comment? Uh, okay, Rituximab uh, represents the best therapy uh, in uh, patients with renal involvement and um, direct uh, antiviral agents uh, can provide some benefits in patients uh, uh, with other mild symptoms like purpura that uh, sometimes can uh, even improve spontaneously or uh, mild altralgia or uh, mild uh, cryoglobulinemic manifestations. Um, the tuxinab is not available everywhere, but uh, and, uh, and some uh, many, 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 many research, many clinicians um, found uh, that they um, uh, thought uh, it, uh, it's a, an expensive uh, treatment, but uh, remember, let me remind what uh, I try to emphasize in my presentation. Rituximab in a, a sing, uh, given a, in a single uh, 
uh, cycle uh, consisting of four or uh, of, uh, as we we usually do uh, six infusion uh, uh, can obtain uh, a steep remission of the disease without any other maintenance therapy and uh, besides uh, the, 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 the biological the biosimilars that uh, uh, are now available uh, of the um, are uh, quite uh, effective and uh, with uh, a cost that is uh, one third of the original model. So also this aspect can be taken into account. Okay, um, so I have a few questions for you uh, from the audience. And the first question would be, would you consider additional steroid therapy in a patient with pleomobilinemia with no presence with AKI and active MPGN with presence? In our series, uh, uh, five patients, if I remember well, were given uh, at the beginning, at the starting of therapy, also still pulses uh, with uh, a very short course of uh, prednisone because of a very severe presentation. But uh, the majority were treated with uh, rituximab alone, including uh, uh, two patients with nephrotic syndrome, a real nephrotic syndrome, not only uh, the nephrotic range of proteinuria, a real nephrotic syndrome with 10 uh, and more than 10 grams uh, per day of proteinuria and edema, etc., uh, who, who were uh, diabetic. They were treated uh, successfully with uh, rituximab alone. Okay. Another question for you is. Um, since B cell depletion is rapid after rituximab therapy, how long would you wait for, start, for starting DAA when choosing sequential therapy starting with rituximab? Um, um, as I showed in the last, I showed in the last uh, um, slide. Um, uh, Direct anti-agent therapy, uh, anti-antiviral agents can be given um, also um, simultaneously uh, with the reproduction. Uh, the, the problem is the tolerance. But uh, let me uh, emphasize that uh, in many cases, uh, in many cases, uh, the, um, the HCV patients with fibrobulinemia are almost asymptomatic by a point of view of hepatic uh, involvement uh, due to infection. And we can also, um, we can uh, wait uh, before treating them uh, for eradication of the virus. But what I mean is uh, if we have a patient with uh, an important, uh, an important uh, renal involvement, we have to treat before the renal involvement. And after weeks or months, we can uh, eradicate the, the virus. Of course, in the presence of a, high, a very high viral load, we uh, can be, uh, uh, we can think also to, 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 to give the patient both the, the drugs together. Okay, thank you for this very clear response. Another question is, when would you perform uh, plasma pheresis? Plasma pheresis, plasma exchange, you mean? When? Yes. Okay, uh, the plasma exchange can be uh, very, um, very, plasma exchange is in generally very effective and uh, um, maintain some role in the treatment of uh, these patients. Um, uh, in the real life, uh, the number of patients needed 
who needed plasma exchange now after the introduction of rituximab in uh, uh, the therapeutic armamentarium, the number of these patients is quite low. Um, some new indication of plasma exchange uh, can be um, uh, the, the can be the, the, the treatment of patients with a very high cryocrit level. In these cases, uh, removing cryoglobulins before giving rituximab can avoid uh, the combination of rituximab with cryoglobulin that uh, in uh, as um, as uh, shown by a um, uh, French group uh, can be very deleterious uh, in uh, uh, these patients. So, uh, giving plasma exchange before it took him up uh, in the presence of a very high cryopic can be very useful. Okay, thank you. And we have a last question for you, uh, and then we will have to close this webinar. Is considering Hemodialysis patients have a high prevalence of uh, HCV infection. How frequent is um, cryoglobulinemia vasculitis in this population? Um, uh, okay. Uh, do you want uh, to bring that um, hemodialysis? Uh, how frequent is uh, the how many patients reach the dialysis? Yes. Okay. Uh, the, the number of patients with cryoglobulinemia to uh, undergo dialysis is not so high. It's a very few number of patients. <clears throat> I, I think that uh, this, this depend, depends on both the, the, um, the effective therapy that uh, uh, was used in the past and especially now, and also the, um, the fact that uh, um, when uh, in the past the patient had the important involvement in many organs, um, he uh, died before uh, reaching dialysis. Now, with the introduction of rituximab, the patient, the, the, the patient. Uh, die for uh, cardiovascular uh, um, cardiovascular reasons uh, has a has an old man an old woman uh, who was treated uh, with uh, an effective drug but uh, anyway the number of patients with cardiovascular uh, undergoing dialysis is very very few Okay, so again, thank you, Professor Rocatello, for this um, very nice and very comprehensive overview of uh, this disease. And uh, thank you both. Uh, thank you for attending this uh, webinar. And do not forget the next one presented by Enrico Vidal on non infectious complications of PD in children that will be held um, after the next IPNA conference. Uh, goodbye and have a nice evening. Bye, thank you.